Ed and Lorraine Warren are undoubtedly the heroes in the Conjuring universe, but can the same be said about the real Warrens? This new Netflix documentary might make you think twice. Netflix originals have always been the biggest draw for the streaming juggernaut, and their true crime documentary offerings have been so popular that they've been spoofed by both American Vandal and Black Mirror. Released just in time for the Halloween season, the streamer's latest documentary, The Devil on Trial, has been dominating the top 10 charts across the globe. The film is the latest from Peabody Award-winning and three-time BAFTA-nominated writer, director, and producer Chris Holt, and tackles the first and only time demonic possession was used as a defense in an American murder trial. Taking place in 1981, the trial made headlines as the Devil Made Me Do It case, as 19-year-old Arnie Cheyenne Johnson claimed that he was not guilty in the murder of his landlord, Alan Bono, because he was possessed at the time of the killing. If this plot sounds eerily familiar, it's because the same story served as the basis for the most recent installment of The Conjuring series, 2021's The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. A master Satanist is not an adversary to be taken lightly. The films in The Conjuring universe are grounded in the alleged real paranormal encounters of Lorraine and Ed Warren, as portrayed by Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, respectively. In fact, it was the real Lorraine Warren who contacted law enforcement to claim that Johnson was possessed at the time of Bono's murder. This means that the documentary could technically fit within the extended universe of the Conjuring franchise, and the fact that some of those interviewed for the documentary still stand by Johnson's story makes the fictional horror movies based on a real story claim appear even scarier. Then again, the documentary doesn't paint the Warrens in the same positive light as the Conjuring films. My mother and father received $4,500 but Ed and Lorraine Warren received 81,000 and some change. Johnson's story actually starts with a young man named David Glatzel, who was allegedly possessed as a child. I don't like to be remembered as the 11-year-old boy that was possessed. <laughs> but I gotta deal with it every day. The Warrens assisted with his exorcism, and it's said that during the procedure, Johnson taunted the demon to take him instead. A few months later, Johnson attended a party where Bono was also in attendance, which ended with Johnson pulling out a five-inch pocket knife and stabbing Bono multiple times. His body was found two miles from the site of the killing. Johnson maintains that he does not remember anything about the murder, and his defense lawyer tried to argue in court that this was the result of demonic possession. The judge eventually rejected the defense, and Johnson was eventually convicted of manslaughter in the first degree. Johnson was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in a maximum security prison, only serving five. Holt's documentary features never-before-shown audio recordings and photographs of the alleged possession, fictional reenactments, and interviews with Johnson and family, including brothers-in-law David, Alan, and Carl Glatzel. Holt said on the Netflix podcast, you can't make this up. When the Warrens came along, they were told to start documenting David's possession. They needed to provide proof and evidence to the diocese to get approved for an exorcism. This documentary is the first time that documentation has ever been shown to the public. Johnson's trial and defense claims have been adapted multiple times in addition to the Conjuring series, but this is the first time many of those directly involved with the real events have ever told their story. Holt told Netflix, there are people who tell lies, but I sat down with David and Arnie and Alan and Carl for hours on end, and their stories never changed. I think they were telling me the truth, but it's their interpretations of the truth rather than it being a hardened fact. Season one of the Shutter docuseries Cursed Films features an episode on William Friedkin's The Exorcist, where a priest mentions that when assessing accusations of demonic possession, priests now have to consider whether or not the so-called possessed person is merely emulating what they've seen in movies. Considering the demon supposedly possessing David Glassell and Arnie Johnson has a penchant for calling people douchebags and exclaiming fat pork chop at a priest, it's hard not to view this as a case of someone attempting to echo your mother sucks and hell. The difficult thing about determining the truth of The Devil on Trial and The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, is that both stories deal with faith and deeply rooted beliefs. Many of the people the Warrens assisted truly believe in demons, ghosts, and possessions with every fiber of their being. At that point, it almost doesn't matter what a judge ruled in Arnie Johnson's case, because people are going to believe what they believe. And so, the documentary exists in a bit of an ethical conundrum, as does the third Conjuring film. The reality is that regardless of what anyone may believe, Alan Bono was stabbed to death. And while the circumstances surrounding his murder are ripe for entertainment, it begs the question, what is lost by intertwining true crime and a story of the supernatural?